Well, it's a strange, strange world that we live in, Master Jack. Do you remember that song? Now, it's one of the tracks of my childhood growing up in South Africa. Let's take a listen. It's a strange, strange world that we live in, Master Jack. He taught me all I know and I never knew. Yes, Four Jacks and a Jill is a South African folk group that brought that song, Master Jack, to life. Not only having a hit in South Africa, but across the world. What's more remarkable, they're still performing. And two members of Four Jacks and a Jill are with me in studio. Now, I'm delighted. Uh, Glenn Islin, the Jill, and Clive Harding, one of the Jacks' original members. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm so excited to have you here. Yeah, I grew pleasure. up on Master Jack. It's such a cool song. Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah. It's it really been is. cool for a long time. It really is wonderful. And just look at you there. That was in 1967, wasn't yes. it? Yes. You yes. haven't changed a bit. <laughs> oh, gosh. Really? Can I move closer? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that time. I mean, that is a song that we all remember. Um, and it, it went international. That yes. was it the big it Hit. Yeah. So tell me, it, it wasn't written by the group, it was written by David, David Marks. Marks. David Marks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and did you realize immediately, I'll start with you, Glennis, when yes. you first went through it, that it was a hit song? Actually, I didn't. Clive heard it first. Clive, so you and told the me the And the discerning story. in him, after many other people, the, said the yes. The amazing thing is that the song had been offered to, his, uh, David Marks is a folk singer, mm. okay? Now he'd offered it to all his folky friends like Des and Dawn, for instance, and Ian and Richie, and so on and so forth. And then eventually, a guy called John Edmund met up with our one a rhythm guitarist, Till Hanuman, who happened to be at a folk club, because he liked folk music. And he said, listen, you must meet this guy, David. He's written a song, it's, got, it's called Master Jack, and he thinks you might like it because you're four Jacks and a Jill. Ah. Anyway, so we had to listen to it, and the, the, we, we did a very rough recording of it, with, with him singing it. And then our tape recorder was stolen. Then, then we had a, a very, very big hit with a double gold disc with a song called Timothy. Yes. And then we had to put out an LP, which you could remember, but a lot of people I remember probably them. don't. Yes. <laughs> so we had to put out an LP, and on the LP we had to have the songs that obviously that, that we liked, but we, I was always pushing local music. And I insisted that they put the song, Master Jack, on the LP. And My I word. fought for that. Then eventually they did a, 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 a follow-up for Timothy, was, which was called I Look Back. And Master Jack, I got them to put that on the B-side. And then the, the, the main sales guy, a guy called Issy Nathan, said to me at the launch of I Look Back, he said, you know what the hit is? It's Master Jack. And I tell you, my heart did it flip. I couldn't believe what he was saying. And I argued with him because he, he thought musicians were probably lower than the lowest. You know? Because, uh, well, that's sort of his opinion anyway. Anyway, so I took him on a bet that it would never be a success. So what he did was, they, they used to go out of the boxes of 25, uh, seven singles in each box. And on the one box it had on top Master Jack and on the other one I look back. So when he went in, when he sold, people went into the record shop, they would say to the record purchaser, um, the, the record company are pushing this particular song, I Look Back, but we know LM Radio are going to put it onto their playlist, mm. Master Jack. So the record shops then bought two boxes of the same thing. <laughs> and often people went in, I mean, we'd go to our shows now and say, how many of you bought the same record twice? And people would put up the <laughs> Tell me about Master Jack. Who is Master Jack? Do you know? Yeah, I, I, well, sort of. Sort of, do you know? Sorry, I'm doing all the talking. That's and okay. We'll, really we'll definitely chat to Glennis as well. But okay. Well, what, it what goes back to the mines. Yeah. David Marks working there. Yes. And apparently and he wrote it underground. Yes. While he yes, was working yes. the mines. Yes, and it, and it, it involved um, a political incident where... Yeah. Where, well, what, what, David was a very anti-apartheid activist, okay? But he chose the guitar and music and pen and so as opposed to the AK-47. And um, he was underground and he came up from underground and his shift boss, okay, was being in, in a, a fight with a couple of other guys, all Afrikaners, the shift boss as well, uh, um, up in the canteen. So David went to the assistance of his shift boss, okay, and um, he then, after they sorted out the other guys, they were walking away, and David said to his shift boss, what was that all about? So he said, now, ek het gesê, ek is blij die donne is dood. Okay, um, I'm glad that the difficult guy of the thunder or whatever is dead. So David said, well, who are you talking about? 
So he said, don't you know? So David said, no, I've been underground. He said, oh, Hendrik von Wout has just been assassinated. And, he, and this shift boss said he was glad that, th that Hendrik had mm -hmm. been assassinated. How does that relate to Master Jack? Well, you see, the, they called the shift boss was called Jack. Okay. It was Boss Jack, you see. And Master, yes. Okay, and so it's a strange, strange world so we live in was, was a comment. That yes. David made because he felt, here, here his shift boss is an Afrikaner. He thought every Afrikaner was a racist and uh -huh. just was totally against black people. But here his shift boss was actually fighting for, on behalf of black people, or the, the, the rights or the likes of, of black people. And he thought, gee, it's a strange, strange world we live in. Wow. Were you aware of the connotation of the song when, when you first sang it, Glenn? No. No, I wasn't. But I really liked the words because they, they had some depth to them, mm -hmm. you know, about um, somebody uh, being with someone and saying, you've taught me all I know and, and, and I'm grateful for it, but it's time that I went out and saw the world for myself instead of hearing about it secondhand. What was it like for a South African folk band to hit the world stage in the 60s and 70s? Was it a completely heady experience? It was, it was. It was unexpected for us and our record company who hadn't even actually built that sort of thing into their contracts yet. So um, on, in, in that regard, we, it, it actually wasn't really dealt with very well. But um, as far as going overseas is concerned, we had wonderful times. It was phenomenal. Uh, it absolutely. was absolutely phenom phenomenal. We, it took us around the world to, to the North American continent, the South American continent. It took us to Australia, to many countries in Europe, uh, higher up in our own African continent when it was easily, more easily um, available to go. Uh, but um, we we didn't get to Russia. <laughs> Our passport wouldn't allow us. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I can I can well imagine. Yeah, or China. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And what? Looking back, I mean, I think that the, the growing older is, is such an amazing opportunity to get real perspective on one's own life. Do you think that uh, it was a it was something that if you'd handled it differently, you could have become like global superstars? Or did it just run its course and you were happy with that time? Well, we, we, we could quite easily have been, because of Glennis, we could have become global superstars. In fact, quite an interesting thing happened. We did a concert in, in Philadelphia and a pr very famous producer, the guy who produced the Monkees and, and, the, and the Archies and so on, he came to see us and he, wa he was going to produce another band. He wanted another band and he wanted Glennis to be part of that band. And the band was called Tomorrow. But then it meant we would have to break up for Jackson the Jew, and we said we weren't prepared to do that. So he took his second choice, and that was Olivia Newton John. Oh my word! Yeah. <laughs> Glennis, how does that make you feel? Are you uh, happy because you've gone on to great success? You're an actress as well, and you've well, done a sort lot of. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 what I love is that you're still making music. You've yes, just we are. Uh, finished a run at the barnyard. Yes. Yeah. Um, how, what is it like to still stand in front of a, a, a group of people and perform? Is it still the thing that really brings you the greatest joy? Uh, one, yes, one of the things. If you put aside family, children, mm, and mm. things like that, yes, one of the things it does. There's, I think when God gives you a gift like this, and, and you're standing there, there is such a connection between you and the audience that you become one. And, and uh, you, sh you do share something, and that's amazing. Because without the sharing, the, the gift doesn't have its full potential, doesn't have its full satisfaction for yourself or for them. Mm. So it really is a participation in a gift, mm. not so much as in a person. It's the gift that the person has got. Absolutely wonderful. And you're both so youthful, and you've been around for a long time. Yeah. How do you, what is your secret to staying? I mean, performing on stage is, is, can be quite vigorous yeah. and yes. quite intense. Yes. What's the secret? Especially for Glenn. Yeah. Are, uh, people often ask, you, how, how come you've managed to be together in show business for 55 years? And youthful, Sally said. Yeah. <laughs> and youthful. Let's not forget well. youthful. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, we are born again Christians, okay? Uh -huh. So we have the Lord in our life, and He's con in control of everything. And we always put everything before Him before we try and do anything. Not that we're always obedient, of course, but we do our best. But um, we, we just, we, we love life, and we love people, and we try to do as much as we possibly can for people.
how I do think that what added to it somewhat for both of us was that we had a lot Lamaki when I was 43. Fantastic. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. So the, the children keep you young. I had my children late. You so also. So you. I you, had my last child at 40. So yes. They're exhausting, but they do keep you young. <laughs> yes, they do because it, it, you, you find you're mixing with younger people because you're growing up with them and their parents are younger, and so your your perspective stays young. You have to. Your, your hours have to remain younger. This is this is this is truly. It's been absolutely wonderful chatting to both of you and, and hearing the history of Four Jacks and Jill and particularly of Master Jack, but you're still creating music. Now, we're going to play a little bit of your taxi song yes. to play out, but before we do that, just set it up for me and tell me a little bit more about that particular song, which is a new creation. Yes, it, it is. It is written by one of the members of our group called Paul. Paul Nissen, yeah. And the exciting thing is um, the version you're going to hear is not the actual one that will be out on the air shortly. It's 90% it, of it is, but what I did is I just added in a little bit of a rap with Dennis Good Rap. She said I thought it was crazy. <laughs> We're going to have to listen to I've that. Often, <laughs> I've, I've often got her to do crazy things. So had the band been here this morning, the whole band, we, we would have done that version. It's What you're going to hear is 90% of the original song with, without the rap. So the rap it makes it it's just it's, it's just so it's so great because honestly she's so funny in it. You know, she <laughs> talks about wow well, look there's a red robot up ahead oh, and all that kind of thing wonderful. You know, the wrong side of the road. Yeah. I look forward to oh, it up on the pavement <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much to both of you for coming in let's take a little listen for that song but all the best i know that there are going to be more performances next year so thank you definitely Sally. keep us in the loop on that that's Dennis lynn and clive harding of four jacks and a Jill, and let's listen to one of their latest songs. Taxi, me my love. Right, please, have to miss my love. 